Uh, so we are running 50 minutes ahead of schedule because um, we've had to adapt the agenda earlier. Um, I don't know if Margot is online to be able to do her reach presentation uh, now. Or Hello, system? actually, it will not be Margot, it will be me. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, so if you're ready, um, I can hand the floor over to you. Are you okay to share your screen? Yeah, of course. Thanks. So can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So thank you everyone uh, for the opportunity to uh, introduce our work. Uh, today we will be talking about area-based assessments uh, conducted by uh, the REACH initiative in Burkina Faso. Uh, and the idea was uh, in part to try to inform CCCM actors uh, in the, in the um, city that were covered. Uh, but quickly, I'll go back uh, to the context. Uh, so the crisis started in Mali in Central Sahel in 2012 and then spread to Niger and Burkina Faso. Uh, the beginning of the massive displacements uh, in Burkina Faso started in 2019. And unfortunately, in 2021, we witnessed an intensification of ultimatums and attacks targeting civilians. Uh, prior to this, it was more targeting military forces. Uh, maybe you've heard of the attack of Solahan on the 6th June, uh, where there were more than 110 uh, casualties. Um, and also the insecurity continued uh, its extension to new areas and especially it started to slide east. Uh, so as a result, we had uh, increased the displacement and few permanent returns so far, which means that uh, these case studies will focus mainly on uh, non-displaced population and IDPs. Uh, we have very few returnees and very few uh, refugees in Burkina Faso. Uh, so as the result of the crisis in April 2021, we had more than 1.2 million IDPs in the country. Um, so the question is, where do these people go, right? Uh, most of them actually are going to settle in urban centers because uh, there are still a strong military and government, government presences there, uh, which implies that uh, the urban centers are less targeted than rural areas in the countries. Um, so in terms of settlements, uh, it implied a mixed typology with uh, income for co complex setting settlements in what we call here sites d'accueil temporaire, so temporary accommodation sites. Uh, it's either uh, self-settled informal sites in uh, peri-urban areas or official sites um, that are monitored by CCCM actors and uh, led by, uh, the monitoring is led by uh, local authorities. Uh, and there are very few collective centers, but I will not go uh, on, uh, I will not speak about them because uh, it's only a uh, few of them. And we have a lot of out of camp and dispersed IDPs, and that's really the, the core of the challenge here in the countries. Most of them live uh, um, in host families or are hosted by relatives or rented, renting accommodation uh, in, the, in the city. And some are even building their own on homes in the periphery of uh, urban centers. Uh, so uh, the goal of the ABA, the area-based assessment, um, was to inform CCCM actors uh, and especially uh, support national agencies and CCSM on localization of I IDPs and on existing capacities and uh, potential collaboration that could be uh, developed. Um, it was also uh, an idea to uh, inform people-centered CCCM and to understand gaps, especially in service provision. Uh, so here are kind of the four pillars I will uh, try to develop a little bit more uh, now. Uh, but uh, all of that was done uh, with uh, the idea to inform minimum standards for comp management. And so we worked closely with uh, local authorities and uh, ACTED, which uh, is a... Uh, um, uh, working with local authorities in the Centre Nord region where the ABAs were conducted to try to um, develop uh, this approach. Um, so why an ABA was needed? I think it's a very important question because of course there was already a CCM site monitoring implemented uh, on uh, each site. Uh, but as I said earlier, it was very key to inform on dispersed IDPs because uh, 
some of them are really out of the radar and I will show some example of how we can try to identify them to include them in the response. Um, which was also interesting, I think, is that we really tried to assess displaced and non-displaced communities because uh, in an urban context, the non-displaced communities can be really also impacted by the displacement crisis, uh, in, especially in terms of uh, service provision. Um, and so uh, the ABA was also an opportunity to identify need strengths at city level for specific sectors, such as WASH, shelter, and NFI governance, etc and not only uh, inside of the sites. Um, and from that, we could uh, draw also co comparison in between sites uh, and with other areas of the city. So I think it was a useful tool um, because of this. And to finish, as I said, uh, we were um, and uh, we were having a focus of the mapping of infrastructure inside, but also out of sites. And for me, it's a very important uh, um, point because um, not having a school or a health center in the site, uh, if you're in an urban context, doesn't mean that IDPs will not have access to school or will not have access to uh, health uh, infrastructures. So it was really a way to understand where IDPs in sites were going and how these services were impacted by the the higher uh, demands, uh, of course. Um, so a quick point of our methodology, but I will not go uh, in detail through it. We can then discuss it. Of course, there is a secondary data review, especially regarding demography. Uh, we are then using a mixed uh, approach uh, in terms of primary data collection with quantitative uh, data uh, of uh, key eyes and household surveys and a focus group discussion during qualitative primary data collection. And for service infrastructure, we are also using observational data collection and participatory mapping uh, in, uh, to complement our uh, key eyes interview. And to finish, we are also relying on satellite imagery analysis. And I will give you an example um, that can be useful, I think, in some context. So uh, when it comes to understanding local governance system and existing implementing actors, as uh, I said earlier uh, in uh, Burkina Faso, uh, the local institutions are already working closely with NGOs and UN agencies to uh, monitor sites. However, uh, we are really trying to also uh, take on board the civil society and private sectors. Uh, and to do so, we are uh, doing a, a, a territorial diagnosis of existing actor. Uh, and we are also uh, identifying some uh, key eyes uh, as part of civil society and private sector to understand their point of view on the impact of the crisis uh, on, the, on the city center. So it's very interesting because um, they were uh, both there before the crisis uh, started uh, and they often have very uh, interesting uh, insights uh, on the consequence of, of the crisis on local population, right? Um, then here is uh, my example of uh, the, the use of image satellite imageries. So here is a novel lay of three different uh, satellite imageries of the city of Barça Logo, which is in the Centre Nord region and where uh, lots of IDPs settled in the past years. So in yellow, you see all the buildings that existed in November 2018. Uh, in light purple, it's in November 2019 and in uh, dark purple, it's July 2020. So what is really interesting here, of course, you can see clearly the sites that appeared, except for site seven, because the picture was uh, actually taken prior to the emergence of the site seven. Uh, but um, what really should strike you here is the Western part of the city. Um, it seems that a whole part appeared during uh, the 2019-2020 period. Um, and so what we saw was really interesting is that when we cross check this data with uh, observation on the field and key informant interview, we realized that, of course, it was uh, the, the part of the natural growth of the city, but it was also uh, lots of IDPs who settled um, uh, by building their houses or um, by uh, rented accommodation in this area. Um, that were new and in doing so we were really trying to emphasize um, the impact of these new settlements 
to CSSM actors because this can have a massive uh, impact on service provision in the area, especially when you look at the localization of site five is that one, you can imagine uh, how these um, the, the health centers and school in the area can uh, have a higher pressure than they used before the crisis. So here is another example of the mapping of basic infrastructure. It's also in Barça logo. Um, and so here you can see that uh, resulting from the mapping, we only saw three markets in the city uh, because Barça logo was a relatively small uh, town before the crisis started. And so as a result, uh, we had uh, some um, uh, household surveys in the northern part uh, of the of the city that uh, really uh, underlined the difficulty to access to markets and the, as a result they were really dependent on um, food distribution um, for their um, access to food uh, and so also it's important to uh, flag that IDPs uh, in uh, Barça logo they don't have access to cars or to bicycles they only uh, are moving by feet and so in that sense they were also fearing the road to go to markets uh, because uh, of the risk of attacks so it was uh, an interesting uh, uh, tool to try to identify with CSSM actors where were well the needs uh, and uh, uh, prioritize uh, food security, food distribution on the field. Uh, here, another map example. Uh, it's uh, this in uh, another uh, region, in the northern region of uh, Burkina Faso, on the La Ferme site. Uh, here, we combined some indicators uh, to identify high pressured water points within the sites. So you can see that in the southern part of the sites, uh, there are two non functional water points and one is functional uh, but it has a high number of users a day and uh, among these users most of them um, reported that the waiting line was uh, very high um, to access to water so we shared this data with the CSSM uh, actor in the in the site and with also the wash cluster to try to then uh, develop an emergency response with a quick rehabilitation of the water point. But, uh, and I think it's an important link, our ABA can also be used to work on more recovery response. And so, for example, on the localization of the center of the city, uh, you can see here that there is kind of a, a, a light coverage in terms of water points. And so we also tried to share this information with local authorities. So maybe they can extend the network, uh, the water network, because uh, as a result of the crisis, there are more and more needs uh, in terms of, uh, of access to water in the city center as well. Um, so to conclude quickly in terms of lesson learned, I would identify three main points. First, on IDP settlements, as I said, as we are in Burkina Faso in a very recent displacement context with a highly volatile situation uh, that evolved very quickly, uh, data may be incomplete uh, and the monitoring process is still recent. So the systematization of remote sensing can really be a useful tool to uh, help CSSM actor identify uh, where are located the IDPs, especially dispersed ones. Uh, in terms of assessment objective, uh, I think that um, there is a need to understand informal sites and complex settlements in their urban context, especially uh, service provision in and out of sites. Uh, and in that sense, uh, ABS should be understood as a way to inform system actor, but also urbanism plans and basic service coverage. Uh, and in that uh, sense, we are not also trying, uh, we are not only trying to inform um, emergency response with an ABA. I think it should really be understood as a tool uh, to inform as well local authorities and recovery plans. And finally, on co local communities involvement, it's still a work in a process uh, in Burkina Faso. And I think it's really uh, interesting um, to, to hear about what the UN Habitat has been trying to do uh, also. We are really trying to empower local communities through result interpretation workshops. Um, so for example, uh, we 
we collect on the field our primary data and then we do a first round of analysis and based on the result we obtain, uh, we organize participatory um, workshop where we present our result to the local community and we ask them how do they interpret this result? Uh, do they uh, draw priorities from the result we share with them? And then only we go to uh, local actors and uh, system actors to present the results. So they also have a part in the analysis in itself. And I think uh, we will be implementing this approach in August. Uh, so if you're interested, we could give you some feedbacks, but I think it will be very interesting. Uh, and so to conclude, um, some feedbacks from uh, the actors we worked with. Uh, so the actor system coordinator 16 that presented us a Thursday uh, really uh, underlined that uh, rich work on infrastructure mapping was critical to their operationalization insights. Um, and the the local authorities, the Prefet of Barcelona, emphasized that rich information products helped to ensure that all local aid actors had access to the same level of information. And I think it is really a key message in the urban context, um, especially in countries where Burkin, like Burkina Faso, uh, where there are still a strong presence of uh, local authorities. You need to include them in the process to make them the owner of uh, this same approach and to keep them informed at the same level of clusters and uh, UN agencies uh, who, you, who you are usually working with. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecile. That was a really interesting presentation. And I think it was um, very complementary to some of the presentations that went before the area-based approach from Yemen, as well as even some of the settlement profiling. I think maybe one of the common themes you can see <clears throat> coming from these sort of area-based settlement discussions is getting uh, everyone, different stakeholders and local authorities, especially um, talking the same language coming from, which comes from common maps and common information is a is a critical coordination tool that I think um, it, said, it seems very simple uh, to say, but actually in reality is incredibly difficult to get everyone looking at the same map and seeing the same thing. So thanks very much to, um, to the presentation from Reach. Um, we're